Now we'll get rolling here. Uh, I don't know. There's just a whole lot else to say. Everybody, obviously, uh, from this weekend, it was it was tough, right? I mean, that's uh, that was a tough one to swallow. Um, and in a lot of ways, for the first time, we played complimentary football. And, and I'm talking about the first half, and that's really what we've got to be able to kind of hone in on and find ways to continue to be able to do. Uh, play complimentary football, offense, defense, special teams. A big emphasis as we went out there on the road in this league. You got to play great on special teams. You got to say dominant special teams. And um, I thought we did a really good job in that in that phase of the game. You know, we, we ended up, you know, giving one back to them and. and uh, it's not the way you can do it on special teams. That's not dominant special teams, but for the most part and everything else, we're very, very solid there. And that kind of allows you to play that complimentary football uh, that we've got to be able to do. Like if we're not going to, you know, sugarcoat anything here. Like if we don't play in all three phases of the game, it's going to be difficult for us as we continue to grow and build. And so there's not one in particular thing that you say you got to be able to do. You got to be able to do it in all three phases, and that's going to have to be our mo. That's going to have to be the the focus for, for what it is that we do and we keep talking about these winning habits. Well, the winning habits as a team is to be able to play complimentary football, is to be able to play in all three phases. In all three phases, we've got to be able to contribute to winning. We're just not to the point right now where if we're not playing well defensively, well, it's okay because our offense is going to go out there and outscore them. If we're not playing well offensively, that's okay. Our defense will go out there and we'll shut them out. It, we're just not to that point. Um, in my career, I've been fortunate to probably be at that point maybe three times three or four times in, in my career where there's an opportunity where you say okay we're not playing very well or not scoring our offense okay you know we're not going to give up any more than three points and then vice versa you know hey we're not playing real well on defense all right we'll we'll score 35 38 40 whatever we have to score um you know and, and so i've not been in a whole lot of those situations but have been before um and, and where we are right now, we just know we've got to be able to play all three phases of the game. We've play, got to play complimentary football. We've got to hone in on what the winning habits really look like uh, and continue to enhance those. Luke, through two performances so far, Braden's had really good plays and then some ones that obviously he wants back. Like, how do you get a little more consistency out of him? What are the steps he's got to take through practice? I'm not sure which plays you're referring to when back, but uh, we all have plays we want back. It's obviously highlighted at that position. Um, you know, but I, I think he's done what we've asked him to do. Uh, you know, I mean, we can all pinpoint. He, he'll be the first one probably to tell you the first series he went in there against Alabama was not, you know, what he wanted. But I'd be honest with you, he's continued to grow. He's going to continue to grow. He's going to give us the opportunity, uh, you know, to be able to move the ball around. He's going to give us the opportunity to play at the pace we want to play at. He's going to give us the opportunity to get into the things we want to get into. And I think that, you know, as we continue to grow, that's where we got to hang our hat offensively on. Not that we're going to say, okay, hey, it's his game, and, and we're going to win and lose it with him. No, the, you know, the whole idea is the, the guys around him, and that's what I reminded him as we started the game last week. Right? In warm-ups, I just say, just rely upon the people that are around you. You know, the, this this isn't all on you. You know, everybody, you know, the quarterback is the, the cog of everything that you do, and in particular offensively, but it's not just on his shoulders. And I, I think he is growing. Uh, I think he's done a good job. Um, there's some more things, like you said, both, you know, he would say that as well as, I would say that there's there's other things out there that we can do a better job of, and, and we will. Hey, Luke, uh, Elijah Hills, I believe, played the, the most snaps he has so far, I think 50. So where have you seen some of the most growth like from him since the spring, and just how impactful has that been, especially without James? He's, he's done a great job. I mean, we're, we're still early in the season, and I don't know that our expectation, when, when, when he walks in the door here, the expectation was, hey, I hope you can play 20, 25 snaps a game. And, and you know, from there we'll build. And, uh, you know, what he's done through the offseason, what he's done in the first four games, um, he's been impressive. And he's he's a guy that, uh, as, as we keep looking at these winning habits, that I don't know what his habits were when he walked in the door, but I would say that each and every week, each and every month, he's continued to grow. And I mean that through the first four weeks of the season as well. And uh, He's done a really good job. He's going to continue to, to have more opportunities. Um, but he's a guy that, like, when it, when it, gets down to it. We talked about the hunter be hunted. He has a hunt mentality. And he didn't bat an eye when we played against Alabama. He didn't bat an eye this weekend when we played at USC. Uh, and that's an impressive thing. Uh, and, and it's just one of those guys, like you, you walk in the door, he's coming from Albany, you don't know a lot about him. You've seen minimal to, to a little bit of film on him. You had a 10 minute meeting with him and you know he's a part of your program. Uh, and 
he's done a really good job and he'll continue to grow for us when we need him to. Um, just kind of a couple weeks ago, I know you kind of talked about Chiz just from the you know character standpoint of you know where you've seen him fail. Like, want to get your thoughts on him just on how he's been you know running the ball and maybe where, if anywhere, you maybe want to see it a little more. You know, it, it's such a tough position, and we got a little bit of a you know a tough ride right now at the at the running back spot. Meaning we've got a bunch of guys, uh, and it's probably one of the things that you know that I am going to kind of. Not say impressed to the, you know, but put on the offense a little more to say, look, I don't know that you can play four or five running backs. We got to focus in on hey, who's going to be one, who's going to be the next guy, and then who's the spare. And I just don't. It doesn't give them an opportunity to get into rhythms. Uh, Ches being one of those guys, Ty Lee being another one. Uh, so we're going to have to figure it out. Uh, nothing against Ches. Nothing saying hey, he's going to get 30 cut touches now. Um, but I, what we need to find out is who can get hot who with more opportunities are going to have a better chance for us. And, and uh, you know, that's what's really kind of difficult for Chez, for, for Ty Lee, and even for some of the young guys. So when we talk about continuing to develop, finding the winning habits, we got to find the winning combination too. And there's not one thing that you could say, well, this is going to give us the best opportunity. It's going to have to be the body of work. And, and we're going to have to, you know, give some guys opportunities early in game and have to ride with them a little bit more, I think. That doesn't exactly answer the question on Chez or Ty Lee, but right now I just don't know that we're giving those guys enough opportunities to see if they can get hot, see if they can create some things. Because I think to date, you know, our longest run is 25. I think Yak has the longest one, and the second longest one might be the one that you know Chez turned over, and then the third longest run is is Ty Lee probably on a touchdown this week. And, there's bigger plays that need to be had in, 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 in that, at that position. Um, we gotta figure out if we're not giving them enough of those opportunities to get it. I, don't, I can't tell you exactly who that'll be. Where do you think this program has taken the biggest steps forward since you got here? It can be on or off the field? And where do you feel like you need to grow? That, that's a tough can? question that, you know, as you're sitting in the midst of things, it, it, there's baby steps. I don't know that there's one giant leap Right? I mean, everybody's looking for that giant leap. And, and I've been in programs before where you see what that giant leap is. And I would say right now, it, it's baby steps. You know, I think that you know, things that we've done inside the locker room have, have helped us and have created a, a different environment. And uh, I think things that we've done on the field, you know, little ways have created things that, that we need to continue to build upon. Are, you, are we still waiting for that giant leap? Yeah, maybe. Um, it's not as obvious, it's not as evident because all you get to see is Saturdays. Um, but I can tell you that there's a lot of baby steps that, you know, that lead to the things that make greater changes. Um, kind of sounds like some of the players, right? You sit in there and, and you, tell, you talk to the guys about how much they've worked and how much they've dedicated themselves, and how much they've committed themselves, whether that's the off season, whether that's fall camp, that's going away for 13, 14 days. I, all those things don't guarantee you that on Saturday you're going to be the winner. All those things don't guarantee you that, you know, you're going to get you know, the ball 32 times, we're going to, you know, have eight, 10 sacks. I, I, a lot of times they're baby steps. A lot of times there's things that continue to grow. Um, and so I, I can't, I can't tell you that there's one spot. I can tell you that the leadership I feel really confident in, um, it might not show as much uh, to the guys that are outside the program, but there are baby steps that are continuing to be taken that are going to lead us to where we want to go. Luke, one of the biggest moves you made in the offseason was um, hiring A.J. Blaza for the O-line coach. Through the first four weeks, it seems like the O-line might be one of your, you know, might be the strongest group on the roster. Where have you kind of seen in terms of the growth from that group and also how? I think they're doing a good job. job. I think that they're, they're very well coached. Um, you know, we, we don't have to sit around and talk. Like it's the strength of what we know when we walked in the door here, right? And it's got to continue to be the strength of, of what it is that we do. Uh, there's still more out there for those guys. And I really do believe that. You know, I mean, if, if you're going to be the strength, which, you know, they are, and if you're going to be, you know, the historic group that, you know, is expected around here, um, we're still going to ask for more. And I think they've done a really good job. I think they will continue to grow. And that's what, when you're talking about baby steps, you're talking about a leadership, you're talking about an attitude, that room is, is a big depiction of that. And I know that everybody doesn't get a chance to see that, but um, sitting in there even on Sunday with that group listening to, you know, them review the game a bit, it, it reminded me that, okay, these guys can 
take a little bit more. They can, they can understand that, yes, they might be the cog um, and they might be the crux of our team and our program, but if you really look back at that second half, we need them guys to be better. And not trying to point a finger, but like they can handle it. And if we're going to continue to grow and have continued baby steps that eventually become into large leaps, it's going to start with that group. And uh, so uh, I feel confident that they will and they can. I love the way they're being coached and the things that they're doing. I just think we got to continue to grow there as well. Vinny Anthony's uh, kick return and his uh, touchdown pass was probably where your two longest plays this year. But it, just can you speak to, uh, about Vinny and where you may be seeing development? What kind of stands out to you about how he's come along? I kind of been waiting for it. You know, we've seen a lot in the off season, and I don't just mean his play. I mean. He's a bigger, stronger, faster guy over the last year and a half. And, you know, you kept kind of wanting to, waiting to see when those things were going to kind of pay off. And, and this weekend in particular, uh, you saw it, right? I mean, obviously it was the fourth or fifth play on offense that, you know, he takes the distance and, and wins a one-on-one -on -one and, and then separates himself and finishes the play. And then obviously the kickoff return that, that he takes back to the, you know, the 20. He's the guy that we, I think, pinpointed to say, okay, this is the guy we got to find more ways to get the ball to. You know, he's the kick returner. He was the punt returner to start the year off. We had to limit him a little bit on some of those things because you're like, okay, now how much can we do? You know, you know how much do we want to put him out there to do um, as much as maybe, you know, you still want him offensively as opposed to just on the special teams. He's the, he's the you know, he's the gunner on punt as well. Um, so there's a lot of those things that he's worked his way into. Um, and we need to continue to see him do it. I think this week was the first time where we've all had an opportunity to see him take one of those things to the house, and whether it's on offense or on special teams. But he's a guy that we're going to have to rely upon as well to continue to find ways to get the ball in his hand and, and give him opportunities to make some of those plays. Luke, I don't know if you have experience with this in your career, but Purdue's changing offensive coordinators this week. Like, how much difficulty does that add, or like, how, does it? Or can a team really change course that much in a one week time? Like. How do you, you we don't know, know what's going on, right? I mean, I, I, I try not to speculate. I try not to worry about anything in anybody else's program. Obviously, we're playing them, and we got to prepare to play them. And so there's some things you're trying to, you know, figure out. But who knows if it hasn't been like that for the last few weeks, right? I mean, there's a lot of things you have no idea of. Um, it's just another one of those things. It's it's another, you know, obstacle in the way and, and things that you have to assume and, and, and prepare for. And I don't know if there's an exact way. You're trying to find out well, who's calling it, who's – I mean, like – they're probably never going to tell you, and, and to me, that's just the you know, trying not to single out anybody in particular. So, uh, it's obviously a unique situation early in the year. I, I think it's a bad part, a little bit of the of, of our game. Um, but again, I'm not here to speculate. I'm not here to, to judge of any sorts. I'm just here to make sure our guys are prepared in you know, the best way we possibly can. Luke, uh, Vinny put one on the ground on a punt earlier this year. Tyrell put one on the ground on Saturday. Do you have to try somebody else back there? There's a good possibility. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's not one off the top of my head. I've obviously, there's an opportunity. Maybe we'll, we'll put Will back there a little bit. Um, it's not something Will has been probably, the, you know, extremely confident in. And I don't mean confident. I shouldn't say that. We haven't put him back there a lot, obviously, from t two years ago when he got hurt. Uh, returning punts was kind of one of those things. Okay, let's we'll just try to keep him out of that position you've done so many other things with him um, you know I, I don't know that there's another you know great option I think we've had Tretch back there a bit as well um, we're just gonna have to continue to get better what we do Vinny and, and, and Tyrell are the two guys that we do feel most confident in and uh, we just gonna have to do a better job Luke, uh, you know, former players are obviously very passionate about this place because they spent a lot of time here and if they're frustrated with results and, and voice that is it easy for you to block that out because you're so insulated week to week, or do you feel like it's something you need to address or pay attention to as people might see it? No, I, I don't. I mean, I, I do a very good job. I should say I do a very good job. I don't pay attention to a lot of things. Um, unfortunately, when you have children now that are of the age, they, they tend to, you know, if there is something out there, they let you know. Um, which I got to do a better job of making sure they understand, like, yeah, I don't want to hear those things. Um, but it's a part of the game. Right? I mean, it's all a thing that we have to be able to deal with. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I only worry that if it bothers our guys within our program and our team. Um, but, yeah, if, you, if people didn't have passion for what it is that we're doing, we wouldn't have sold-out crowds. We wouldn't have an environment that 
you know, it, it, that we create here and, and a competitive advantage when guys come into our home because of the passion that, whether it's the fans or former players have, I mean, that's what makes programs great. So you got to be able to handle the, you know, the ups and the downs. You got to be able to handle the positives and the negatives, whether you're a coach or you're a player. And, um, you know, sometimes I think it's a little bit more difficult as a player. If I think back to myself as a player, um, I thought it was more difficult as a coach. I think you better understand the, the landscape of what it is that we live in um, and not allow those things to, to you know, ruffle, ruffle your feathers at all. We kind of two-parter here. Do you happen to know if Max Lopi is going to be out for a while? or Because he wasn't on the chart, but then he uh, looked like he warmed up and then couldn't go. And then kind of dovetailing with that, how do you think Austin Brown did going in? So Max, something happened in pregame warm-up that, that he tweaked his back and he came in from um, just warm-ups and, and couldn't go. Um, you know, it was a very tough, difficult situation. We had to make some adjustments on the fly. And, and to be honest, Austin Brown went in there and, and really did a very good job. You know, he played well. He made some plays. Um, obviously, there's some things he, you know, people can pinpoint and pick on and say we can do better. But uh, I think from, for the situation and things like that, Austin went in and did a really good job. Obviously, he's played a lot of ball for us, so we have an expectation. But he also has played a lot of positions. And where Max was playing at that nickel and kind of had established himself, we've been using Austin a little bit more in the, in the back end for things. So he hadn't taken nearly as many reps at the nickel position and an hour before game time, we had to flip things, and, and he went in there and did a really good job. Um, so similar note, um, Aaron Witt, I, I, you know, last I saw of him, he took a hard shot in his leg, and then he hobbled off the field, so, and I don't think he came back, and I didn't see how he looked, but how was he and what? Not a great play, if, if you haven't watched it. It'll be probably on the, on the, on the video of, a, of, of teaching this weekend. Um, yeah, he took a shot to the knee. I, I don't know exactly where he is just of yet. Um, he, he didn't. He wasn't able to run around a whole lot on Sunday. Uh, hopefully, he'll be okay. And, and uh, I think he's still questionable for where we are right now. It's only Monday, so that's a good thing. Um, but it wasn't really kind of one of those ones like it, it, it's something we got to get out of the game. Uh, I'm not going to dwell upon it. Hopefully, that you know they'll they'll be able to take care of it and, and address it and, and make sure that we're all on the same page as we coach and teach these guys on how to take on some of these blocks. But it's part of making our game a little bit better, a little bit safer for everybody, as opposed to just quarterbacks and wide receivers. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it'll be okay. Oh, and to follow up, when you talk about making the game safer, in terms of maybe not having guys block defensive guys that way, is that kind of? It, there's, we don't want to dive into it, but it's a very gray area on the rule. I, and to be honest, those guys cutting back across, you know, they, they can give you the explanation where he's in the tackle box and. You know, he's coming from 10 and 2, and he's coming from outside to inside. Like, the truth is, if you're not going between 10 and 2 on any cut block, I, it, it's really not, you know, the best for, the, for all of us. Um, so it's just one of those ones that I thought was a little bit more out of the game with those guys coming flat back down line of scrimmage and, and not being able to block low. Um, but there's still a little bit too much of a gray area in there. And, um, so we got to be aware of that. we got to be able to play it a little bit better. One more. Luke, I know you were asked about it after game fourth and one. Um, you had some things to say about that. Going back and watching the film at all, do you feel any different about what you said? And I'm not exactly sure what I said. Well, just the, like, it doesn't matter if you don't block type of stuff. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, again, I know that there's a lot of a lot of opinion for, or for situations like this. Um, when it comes down to short yard situations, whether it's fourth and one, fourth and three, you got to do what it is that you do best. And if we believed that, the best thing for us to be was under center. If we believe the best thing for us to be was a fullback behind us, then, then we would. Um, but it still comes down to execution. And, and that's, as you look back at the entire game, we had opportunities. There were things that were in front of us. We made enough plays to give us a chance to win a football game and a really big football game on the road. But when it comes down to it, we didn't execute. That's one of those plays that you can pinpoint to say is a big, big part of lack of execution third and seven on the seven yard line. Okay, they make a play, but a lack of execution. You know, dropping a punt is a lack of execution. Um, are you gonna switch punt returners because you drop a punt? Are you gonna switch exactly what it is that you think you do well, you know, in short yard situations? No, I mean, we gotta continue to grow and be better. Um, but 
if there's two things that stand out to me that we you know continue to harp upon, I'm sure there's a lot of opinions of, are the last two games, fourth down situations that are, you know, probably put us in a really, you know, a situation where we would expect that this is something that should be a strength for us and what we do. In the last two weeks, the last two games, it hasn't been. Um, so yeah, don't think that we don't go back and look at it, and whether it's an opinion of someone in here, or whether it's an opinion of somebody on TV, I hear it from my wife as well. Like, yeah, it, they're not bad. They do make us kind of think about things. Like, well, is, is this, you know, just because this comes from whoever it comes from, is this an option? Would it be a better option for us? And if we believe it will be, we will. If we don't believe it will be, we'll go back to making sure that, hey, it's still about execution, whether, you know, at whatever formation you get into. Very good.